Hello everyone, you might be wondering uh, how practical it is to actually use Extreme Virtual RAM and Turbo Boost mode to activate. I'm going to show you how Metal Slug 6 for Atomic Wave runs without them in an extreme worst case scenario point where you actually run out of memory. I'm going to go to resume right now and uh, look at this. It is uh, running pretty bad right now. I'm going to have a lot of uh, slowdown, choppiness, lag freezes, etc. Look at this, this is uh, almost unplayable. Okay, we're officially on the PC, we're using Hashi 2 CE version 3.8.0. I mean, incredible job, Mad Monkey, Dan Man 827, Team Shin Constant, and Company. Uh, but we're going to show you two different ways you can install HMOD cores, etc. on your Mini Classics. Uh, I'm doing a little bit of multitasking here. I have my drive connected, and I'm going to unmount it, and I'm going to verify it. And I would recommend doing disk checks before you install any new games, cores, HMODs, etc. Otherwise, you might have instability, crashes, freezes, even C7, C8 errors, and such. And if you get C8 errors or even improper shutdowns, you can have disk corruption. But uh, the two different ways you can install the HMODs and uh, one thing you can do is open up Hashi, go to modules tab, came up these mod hub and we're going to uh, the RetroArch tab and this is where the current version of Extreme Virtual RAM is which is going to change with the next release. You simply download it and we're going to go to my uh, Hashi directory here, go into user mods and we're going to go to the point where it would actually show up. It'd be pretty much right between uh, XBrick and Yaboos. But look, watch right there, there's nothing there. I'm going to download it right here, download all I want right here, and I can download like the amped uh, thing. I'd recommend download them here, but do not click download and install. It's not always uh, going to work reliably, but if you download it into your user mods directory and watch right here, it's right there. Now I can actually install it two different ways. Just keep mine right there. I'm going to go to, uh, of course, modules, install extra modules, and now what I download is going to propagate right into this list there. It's right here. These. Uh, that I just downloaded along with Virtual RAM. And Virtual RAM will change. It'll be like Extreme Virtual RAM Turbo uh, for the release. But uh, check the disk out right here. And you can see I have an error. And I it fixed it in the process of having an error. But now we're going to mount it. And now that we know there's no disk corruption intact there, I'm going to take this uh, work in progress here, which is uh, Extreme Virtual RAM Turbo, most, uh, Turbo Boost Mode Activate. And I'm going to copy it directly into my Mini. I'm going to go to the hard drive or flash drive, go to the hashy directory, and uh, see the swap file here? This is typically where the swap file would be once it installs. I'm going to delete this. Because uh, it'll be there once you install it. But uh, we're going to go to a uh, folder here. And we're going to create a transfer folder. And we're going to copy the HMOD right here. Now we got it there. Hashi transfer. And the HMODs that you'd like to install. This is the alternate method to having your system connected to your PC. And uh, we're going to unmount this drive. Yes, always unmounted to avoid corruption. And then we're going to boot up right now and check it out. And you should see the dialog for installing Extreme Virtual RAM. And the reason I did the disk check is if you had corruption, it would actually fail on the install process for the HMODs using the transfer method. And the way you know it's actually going to work is you'll see the Hashi logo twice. Watch, you're going to see the Hashi logo show up once, and then it's going to disappear after a second or two. And then it's going to do a double splash screen and show the Hashi logo again, and then it's going to do the installation of the HMODs. And then I'm good to go on the ZRAM swap file. Okay, here we go, double splash screen. Now we're going to see the top left dialog for the Extreme Virtual RAM installing, which is roughly 512 megabytes of uh, virtual memory, which is going to be utilized in conjunction with the 256 megabytes, uh, which is an uh, inordinate amount of memory uh, for the Mega Drive S and S and S Classics. It is literally one fourth, one quarter of the total proportionate memory of one gigabyte of onboard random access memory for the PlayStation Classic. But we just installed it, we're good to go. Now our system is booted, we're going to check out Metal Slug 6 uh, with Extreme Virtual RAM Turbo Boost Mode Activate. We're going to load the RetroCat Extreme shortcut, which you can also get via Hashi. Came with the Mod Hub Games tab if you'd like to be able to run RetroArch from the main user interface at any given time. Load content, start directory, media. Uh, you can always uh, run these games from the main user interface if you so choose to as well, but I like to use the dummy folder method. And we're going to go to my Naomi folder, which I have a consolidated collection of the only and Thomas Wave games. And then uh, the release notes, uh, which are upcoming uh, within the next month or so, I'll utilize uh, a little bit of a compatibility clause list so you guys and guys know which games you can actually run. We're going to Metal Slug 6 right now. Look at a great, great box artwork there. And this is the follow-up hardware to what they considered the uh, obsolete Neo Geo hardware at the time. But as far as I'm concerned, it never, ever became obsolete. But we're going to load this with Flycast Extreme, and uh, for the win here with some more Metal Slug awesomeness. And uh, we're going to do two-player mode activate to boot, but it's already running way, way better because not only do we have the 256 megabyte onboard memory in uh, conjunction with the Extreme Virtual RAM, but Turbo Boost mode activate as well.
So we're going to have the game load up here. It should be running exponentially better than before. And uh, the problem with the mini classics is uh, dynamic recompilers, uh, Catch-22, Double-Edged Sword, where games would literally have choke point, freeze point crashes in uh, various games, like Star Fox 64, for instance, for the Nintendo 64 course, had to beat the first stage and get to the outer space map, it would always inevitably slow down to a crawl, then crash completely, unless you have Extreme Virtual Ram installed. And uh, that's an awesome, awesome thing. Uh, you'll see what I mean uh, once I do the memory exploit uh, clear cache thing here. Let's start the game out for a moment here. And of course, games like Killer Instinct uh, were more disproportionate. They would crash every 30 seconds. So some games would crash like 15 minutes, uh, like Star Fox. Other games would crash in 30 seconds, like Killer Instinct. And other games like Mario Kart 64 would actually take hours before they could sometimes crash. Sometimes 45 minutes, 2 hours. But, uh, where the game would typically have a slow down uh, choke point, we'd have hiccups here, whereas they would typically crash in the past. And you'll see a few of these throughout the context of this gameplay. And once we get in here, I mean, you're going to see one of the dynamic recompiler choke points right here. But once the memory uh, clears up, there we go, everything's much, much better. We're going to go to RetroArch settings here, and you can do this if you're ever playing by yourself, no pun intended. I mean, if you don't have a friend or loved one handy to play a second controller, go into RetroArch settings, input, and you can go down to, uh, for each port, uh, here, user 1, don't touch user 1, avoid that, because you might have issues if you accidentally disable your controller, so avoid that. But you can reinstall RetroArch, and of course use your second controller to re-enable it. But if you're playing like a two-player mode activate game, such as Double Dragon, Contra, etc., you can go to user 2 binds and go down to device index and change it to the same index as your controller 1, in this case, which is my PlayStation Classic controller. And you can do it for other uh, uh, ports too, like 3 and 4, if you're playing X-Men, or of course uh, stuff like uh, Musa, another great Konami game, and X-Men, uh, TMT, etc. But we're going to go back to resume. And push the lock there. We're going to pick the Snake Pushkin character for two-player mode activate here. There we go. And we got Snake Pushkin from Escape from LA, Escape from Alcatraz. And we're on a little bit of a choke point here. We normally freeze the crash would be a slideshow there, but now it actually uh, one past there because we stream virtual RAM. And there are other memory exploits that I showcased in the past. I'm going to show you one of those, which you can use on Dreamcast. They owe me a ton of great games, and uh, particularly really, really effective on Nintendo 64 games. Okay, let's try to get through a little bit of this uh, nitty gritty here. This is also Ethan Snake Pushkin here. And he's also a great, great character in real life because uh, he's actually been admirable with his devotion to Godion for decades. How many celebrities do you know that have actually been uh, devoted to uh, their marriages for as many decades? And he's not really, really legally married to Godion, but he might as well be with how long they've been together. And another person that's a perfect example of this would be Pierce Brosnan with the same woman for a good 20 plus years now. I mean, uh, celebrity marriages are a diamond dozen, and they end faster than they start in many cases, but Pierce Brosnan and Kurt Russell have been in it for decades. And of course, Kurt Russell is amazing in all his movies. I saw him when he started out in some Disney movies, like Computer War Tennis Shoes, etc. But when he went on to, like, Escape from L.A., etc., they were some fun movies. I also like them. And of course, that nice Grand House movie, which is an amalgamation and combination of some Robert Rodriguez stuff. And of course, uh, Death Proof. I mean, with uh, Quentin Tarantino, that was a great, great movie. It was an awesome, awesome movie. I'd highly recommend watching Death Proof if you like suspense horror movies. Kurt Russell is fantastic in it as a deranged stuntman. But uh, we got two player mode activate going on here. We're going to get to one of the choke points, which would normally crash, but we're going to use a little bit of a memory exploit here. And I got the heavy machine gun, which uh, the other guy looks a lot like the homing missile from Contra in the black and white version. Here we go, choke point. Oh no! We're gonna go into Retro Settings to get right past that choke point. You can do this on Dreamcast, Naomi, and Thomas Wave games. Go into Retro Settings video, and you can do this anytime you so choose to. Uh, force disable SRGB toggle. This essentially clears the uh, cache. Think of like a sight bike and uh, not having an issue with, of course, the uh, overheat meter. And then we're gonna toggle once to the opposition, then once to the opposition. And for Dreamcast, and Thomas Wave, and Naomi games, you need to do this twice, otherwise, you can have extensive graphical glitches on some games. But with the Nintendo 64, you only have to do it one time. We're gonna resume here, and uh, look at it, it's already running way, way better. And this might surprise you, but this is actually running better than it does on the PlayStation Classic with the Extreme Virtual Ram. And Here's where things get quite interesting. You might notice at the top of it says 632.95 megabytes of memory being used out of the total onboard one gigabyte of memory. And it happens this way because of a few various reasons. One of which is actually the fact that not only do you have to worry about the memory usage of RetroArch, but you also have to worry about your modification, be it an auto blame, blame sync, 
Project Aerith, Retro Boot, or my personal extreme injector, which uses a combination of Retro Boot, Auto Blame, as well as, of course, my own additions. But we're going to do Metal Slug 6 right now, and we're going to run it, and uh, we're going to try to utilize the memory as best as possible here. Once we're in game, it's actually going to be using less memory than it did with Retro Arc Loaded. It's running awesome here. I think it's quite optimized and quite nice. We're going to be able to do two player mode activate. And yes, the choke points, as far as like the catch 22, double edged sword of Dynamic Recompiler, actually behave differently. And think of uh, the context of Hunt for Red October where they talk about bullets behaving differently and uh, I think it's almost like a Bernstein bear effect where it's spelled one way for some and one way for another and think of this as like uh, I'm your father Luke or uh, do you feel lucky punk etc etc uh, you hear it in your mind but then in the movie it's absolutely differently but we're going to do two player mode activate right again here uh, retro settings input uh, here we go and two player uh, port here and we're gonna disable uh, to Logitech controller. Resume. Now we got two player mode activate. But yes, how many phraseologies do you know for movies where they're absolutely different from what you actually see in a movie? Like I'm your father, Luke. You feel lucky, punk. Uh, but I remember stuff like uh, Sledgehammer, which is a great show from the 80s, which is a nice parody take on Clint Eastwood, Dirty Harry movies. And I remember uh, him saying like <laughs> some of the phrases in that movie. And then of course you have. Um, <laughs> you have like Get Smart, another fun show, which is a uh, play on James Bond. I missed it by that much. But I remember the phrase from uh, Sledgehammer. <laughs> you remember what I'm thinking of? Try to see if you can remember what I'm thinking of. I don't want to spoil it. I just want to see if you guys and guys who actually watch the show remember his catchphrase. And just think of other catchphrases like uh, Chilo White and Family Matters. Did I do that? I mean, how many of these phrases do you know? Or, of course, like, uh,. The show that I never ever watch. I swear I never watch the show. Full House with Michelle going, uh, hey dude! <laughs> and doing the thumbs up and such. Yes, we all watch like Family Matters. And of course, uh, stuff like, uh, Full House. I mean, Alf even. But even Alf is kind of fun still to watch nowadays. Even though it really, really doesn't hold up as well as when I watched it initially. Some shows hold up way, way better over time, like Knight Rider, Triple Boost Mode I mean, I can watch it like it was yesterday. It's still highly enjoyable. Really, really holds up well over time. But we got two player Mode Activate here for the win. We're gonna get to this choke point here. Again, this choke point would literally slow down the game to an absolute crawl or freeze the game completely or crash it. But uh, it is what it is. It's run better than ever before. Uh, before it used to be so awful, and my games are literally just crash back to the main user interface. But extreme Virtual Ram for the win on the Mega Drive SNS and NES Classic. And extra memory up to one gigabyte of memory on the PlayStation Classic, which really, really helps. Look at that. I'm using 200, uh, 7 megabytes of memory, which would really, really uh, not go well on the Mega Drive SNS and NES Classic as far as utilizing the overall capacity. And then look at that little chickadee. Let's hope that little chickadee doesn't get taken out here. And it's going to get past this choke point right here. And the game's going to be running considerably better once we're past the choke point here. I don't even have to do the memory clear. It actually clear itself because of the fact that we're using more memory on the PlayStation Classic. That's one awesome, awesome uh, perk to this. I'm going to keep an eye on that little chickadee. We're going to do a little bit of a escort mission here, make sure the chickadee is okay, because I want to grow to a full-fledged chicken mode activate right here. No, no, don't try to kill my chicken. Leave that chicken alone. No, chickadee. And we're almost past the choke point here. Okay, watch the chicken. He's going to grow to a full-fledged chicken. Let's see. Grow up into a chicken. Yeah, we saved the chicken. No, 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 no. There we go. Now we're going to do uh, a little bit of formation here. Look, it's laying eggs. More chickadees. One came first, a chicken or the egg. Uh, paradoxical thing that you can never think. And I love time travel movies and such with paradoxes. Like, I watched uh, Palm Springs over the last weekend. Great, great time travel movie. Butterfly Effect is one of my favorite ones with Aston Kutcher. I even like the follow-up sequels that which do not have Aston Kutcher as well. But, uh... Danaman 87 recommended a short movie today uh, to me to watch, and I checked it out called Control Z, which is the way to undo something. And uh, it had a really cool ending to it, uh, considering I love time travel stuff, and even bad time travel movies, I like those too. Uh, Turbo Boost Mode Activate, you can see that the choke points are actually few and far between here with our one gig of memory here, and Naomi and Thomas Mary Games are running so awesome here. We can literally beat the entire game with way, way better memory usage than ever before here. These are optimized out to watch too. Let's do a little bit of a continue here. Two player mode activate. Get past the stage at least. 
there's a little bit of a Mega Man style thing here at the best. It kind of reminds me of like the Chamber of Mega Man here. And I love stuff like this, how the enemies became more alien in nature as the game progresses. Think of games like Crisis and Far Cry, or uh, even like Contra, how you start out with human opponents, then later on you have like alien style opponents. Let's get past this point here, which you normally get taken out if you don't throw grenades at them tanks. This is run so awesome! Metal Slug 6 for the win! And you can also alternatively run this uh, PSP version, which is pretty much the same game with a few minor differences on the PSP core. Now I'm going to show you the memory exploit for PSP as well before this uh, demonstration is up, because I'm going to utilize it on another game next. Oh no! Uh, but awesome, awesome stuff there. Now we're actually going to uh, reset Retrock and watch very, very carefully what I do. We're going to do the memory exploit for those of you who have issues with the uh, limiter mod. We're going to go low core, or uh, low content here, Star Trek dummy, and just load any PSP game. Doesn't matter what. Load any PSP game. And then we're going to just load, I'll just load Darius Burst. That's a small game, roughly like 40 megabytes in size when it's compressed to CSO format. We're going to load it with the PPSS PP Extreme Core. Now we just committed uh, a couple hundred megabytes of memory, uh, which are basically to keep the limiter from crashing. But watch what happens. Now I'm going to go into load another game right here. We're going to go back and load another game without accident retro because we're going to utilize the same memory, which is now overcommitted. And we're going to go to a Naomi game. And I can actually do it from my playlist, uh, right in my playlist. Right here, let's see what game we can load is uh, a game that typically have issues running. Uh, we'll do uh, another shmup style game. We'll do this one called Mamanoro Katomi. It's a pretty uh, hard to pronounce game. We're going to run right now. But we have committed memory, over committed memory here. And this is a great, great thing that we utilize on a Mega Drive SNES and NES Classics. I have over committed memory in use uh, with the Extreme Virtual Ram and Turbo Boost Mode Activate. And it makes games like Metal Slug 6 run quite nicely, considering. But yes, we're actually... Uh, using the same memory here. Look, it's actually using less memory now. We're using half the memory because we overcommitted memory. Only 106 megabytes of memory now. So overcommit memory trick really, really helps out exponentially and runs some of these games better. And it varies on which games you run, be it uh, Naomi, Thomas Wave, Dreamcast, and Nintendo 64, and so on. But we're going to get in game here, and this is a great, great game. It was just a mouthful to even attempt to pronounce. And I'm going to do more of these videos in the future. But great, great game. If you like stuff like Pocky and Rocky, and uh, of course Valkyrie, which is a great game on the original Famicom, and it's a completely different game for TurboGrafx-16 and the Arcade, which are pretty much the same game. And then on the uh, Capcom uh, Collections, Legend Collections, which are Japan only and such, uh, you actually can play a complete remake of Valkyrie, as well as the uh, Famicom version, and even the Arcade version. So it actually has three distinctive uh, versions. But yes, this memory command is awesome. Look at this. Only using 68 megabytes of memory right now. That's beautiful. Now I'm going to do more uh, videos on the memory exploits. Uh, but I show you the cache clear with the SRGB toggle. As well as this one where I over committed memory with the PSP core. But look how nice this is running right now. Only using 62 megabytes of memory. And this music is <laughs> very, very interesting. Great, great game. And they even made like a real Ghostbusters uh, licensed game off of a Japan game, which is a completely different game like this. If you can think of any other games like this, let me know. Nightmare is another great game that was in MSX, also Famicom. It is like this. And yes, this uh, memory overcommit is making this game run way, way better now. So I'm going to do more, uh, you know, demonstrations of some of these games and how they run. But of course, uh, like I said, with the Thomas Wave and Naomi, it's a good thing to restart Retroarch after you run these games because the memory will actually bog down. But doing a little memory exploit with the PSP will actually be a good thing to do before you load these uh, Thomas Wave, Dreamcast, Naomi, etc. games. We're going to try to get to the first boss here. Uh, continue. Now I wonder if there's a two-player mode activate in here. Let's see. We're going to go to uh, see if we have a two-player mode activate here. Uh, bam, bam, bam. I'm not sure if it has a two-player mode activate, but we're going to check out anyway. Uh, two-player binds, uh, Logitech, resume, resume, do we have two-player mode activate? No, we just have one-player mode activate in this game, I was kind of hoping it would be a two-player mode activate game, it was worth a try though, but yes, it applied to other games like Metal Slug 6 and Dolphin Blue, etc. Use our, uh, power up here, oh yeah. And I'm actually, uh, I didn't realize I could hold down the button to do turbo, <laughs> turbo fire mode activate here. That's what I should have done. But you do strafe it. So if you hold down the attack button and then the direction, it'll strafe in that direction. That's awesome. I'm so used to pushing the button like I do in most games. So I can do top right there, hold down the fire button and uh, strafe in that uh, direction. That was nice. 
I love games where you get strength. So yes, we have turbo fire mode activate and turbo boost mode activate. Memory over commit to boot here. And I'm gonna have to showcase more of these, but you know, this game is run absolutely seamless right now. Way, way better than in my previous uh, testing of this game. We're down to 54 megabytes of memory usage. That is awesome. Let's try to get to a boss battle up here. We should be near one anytime now. There we go, boss battle mode activate. Good ending to this video. Again, I'll do more tutorials on the memory clear and such. And look, there's no slowdown whatsoever in this game. Uh, we're using the memory uh, perfectly right now. A little bit of strength there. And I have a feeling we're gonna get a cranking style enemy behind here. Let's see what we have. I need two player mode wait. They should have added a two player inclusion here. I want to show you a really, really weird game. Maybe I'll do one more game because I like to show weird games. This is definitely a weird game. Come on, we got this. Use the power up there. Bam! Come on, let me use my power up. It kind of reminds me of the catch that we with the uh, bars here. And that means my bullet house buff. This is going to be an easy pushover boss for me. Nothing's going to take me down here. Almost done, almost done. And we use our power up there. Oh, he hit me anyway. Because I used my power up and wasn't paying attention for a quick second. And one way I actually play shmups is I actually don't even look at my character. I look directly at the boss and just kind of like subconsciously know where my character is. There we go. Oh, yeah. Awesome, awesome stuff there. I'm going to show you one more very, very interesting game here. Again, we're going to reset Retroarc and watch what happens here. I'm going to clear uh, the memory cache right here by reset Retroarc. And we're going to play the next game without doing a memory clear at all. We're just going to load it. Again, we're up to 486 megabytes of memory here. And we're going to get down to this very, very interesting game. Another uh, Japan only game, Mushi 2K5. You'll see what I'm talking about once we play the game. But we didn't do the memory clear, so the game's not going to run as well as doing a uh, little bit of memory exploit with the PSP core. So watch what happens once the game loads. And we're using uh, twice as much memory now because we didn't do the memory exploit. So yes, that memory exploit with the PPSSPP. Extreme Core is awesome, awesome stuff. And uh, the Mega Drive SNES and NES Classics, I automatically have memory, uh, you know, the uh, memory overcommit working with various cores. Check this out. Okay, yes, using less memory would definitely be a nice thing to have. But still, out of one gigabyte of memory, and I don't even know what to do in this game. It's kind of like a card battle style game. But we want that little bit of extra edge, uh, a little bit akin to Extreme Virtual Ram, and uh, Super Boost Mode Activate. Do the PSP uh, Extreme thing. Look at this, this is crazy. And you can see the game's actually running quite nicely still. Still not really slowed down on this specific game. Oh no! <laughs> Bam! A wrestling game of Beatles! I got this, I got this, I gotta take him down. <laughs> this is so funny. Oh yeah, yeah, your turn to go down. I'm gonna win this if it's the last thing I do. And I don't even know what I'm doing, I'm just mashing buttons. <laughs> I'm gonna win this match if it's the last thing I do. I wanna see a fatality with Beatles there. Oh yeah! And there's also a great subset of wrestling games, the Giant Cram series, for those of you who are familiar with it, which won great on Nintendo 64, Dreamcast, and of course, Naomi. Oh, that was beautiful. 